not and are not identified with Mr. Bundy, without trying to find out who the real suspect is, the state is left with two pieces of evidence in this case that they had to fit to Mr. Bundy <coughs> to make any case at all. And what the state's case boils down to is Nita Neary and the dental evidence. Clearly, both of these pieces of evidence, or the lack of evidence as to these two items, show a reasonable doubt in the state's case. As to Nita Neary's testimony, the real problems and the reasonable doubts that arise from her testimony stem from the very limited conditions for observation. <coughs> the reasonable doubt as to her testimony is based on the fact that she didn't have sufficient opportunity to observe anyone to later make any kind of reliable identification. Consider what she said about her opportunity to observe. The man was about 16 feet away from her, going out the door. When she saw him, his left hand was already on the doorknob, and she saw him in an instant. The most she would estimate was three seconds. Better than that, she says, an instant. He was in a hurry. He was going out the door. And she saw a profile. The prosecution would have you believe that she saw a complete face. But even Nita Neary, in describing what she did to get those sketches, said, his head was down. I didn't see his eyes. I didn't see his eyebrows. Didn't see a jawline. What she says under hypnosis? What I remember is his nose. The state would have you believe that a protruding nose is a very distinctive feature. Well, it is the nature of a nose to protrude from your face. If your nose didn't protrude, your glasses wouldn't stay on. All noses in profile protrude. That is not very remarkable. That is not very distinguishing. That doesn't describe one nose to the exclusion of another nose or all noses. You can't identify a person's face by one feature. Nina Neary gave you a better description of what she saw in that man's hand than she gave you in his face. She described the color, the size, the shape, that something was wrapped around it. She also gives you a clothing description of the hat, the knit hat, the jacket, the light pants. And a nose. She saw a nose. And what did she say? The prosecution would have you believe that when she saw the man at the door, she thought of a name. She didn't think of a name. She thought of a face. She thought of Ronnie Ng. Under hypnosis, she said the first thing she thought of when she saw that man at the door was Ronnie Ng. Her testimony at trial is, I didn't think of Ronnie Ng until I was going up the stairs. She thought of Ronnie Ng so much, she discussed it immediately with Nancy Dowdy. She told Nancy Dowdy she compared the man to Ronnie Ng. Now Nancy Dowdy came in here and testified that when Nita Neary came up the stairs and told her about the man, that Nita Neary said the man was bigger or taller than Ronnie Ng. But at the time she talked to Investigator Hicks, one week after Nita Neary made that statement to her about Ronnie Ng, what did she say? She said the man was small. She compared him to Ronnie Ng. She was about <coughs> his height. The next problem, the next real reasonable doubt about Nita Neary's testimony comes from that hypnosis session, where she committed herself to the standard that the man looked like Ronnie Ng. She committed herself as strongly to the similarity between the man at the door and Ronnie Ng in that hypnosis session as she committed herself, or would say, when she first looked at Mr. Buddy's picture in that photographic lineup. She said that there is a strong similarity to Ronnie Ng. 
She said that if you find a profile of Ronnie Ying, that would be a good thing to go on. We brought Ronnie Ying in here. We had Ronnie Ying stand up here next to Mr. Bundy. And so you could see for yourself that Mr. Bundy and Ronnie Ying don't look a thing alike. My client is significantly taller than Ronnie Ying. Ronnie Ying is five foot eight inches tall, the same height that Nita Neary said was the height of the man she saw at the door. Ronnie Ying has a dark complexion. The same thing she said about the man at the door under hypnosis and what she said to Officer Brandt. Of course, she said a slightly dark complexion. <coughs> And maybe that has to do with seeing the pale Mr. Bundy sitting over there. That man's complexion isn't dark. It's not even slightly dark. The description that Nita Neary gave to the police was so vague, in the words of Officer Crew, it was so broad, <coughs> the police thought she was describing a light-skinned black male. <coughs> now, Crew would attempt to tell you by his testimony that he takes full responsibility. He was the one that was responsible for inserting the light-skinned black male into the description that he put it out on a bolo. He wasn't the only one. He wasn't the only one that was looking for a black male as well that would fit. The fingerprints, the suspects they submitted to the lab, 17 of those individuals were black men. 17 of those people that they sent the prints to the lab to try and see if they were in the Chi Omega house for black people. And lucky for them, or God help them, if any of them had crooked teeth. <coughs> next, the next reasonable doubt about Nita Neary's testimony are these newspaper photographs she saw. And she got up here and she testified, oh, I really don't remember, I really didn't look at them, I'm not really sure, I can't really remember. But we brought you in a tape recording of a conversation she had with Detective Botiford on March the 14th, 1978. One month after Mr. Bundy's arrest, she still hasn't been shown a lineup. And what does Botiford tell her? We have a man in custody. Have you seen any pictures of this man we have in custody? And she says, well, I've seen pictures, six pictures. And two days ago, my mother showed me a picture that was sort of a profile, part of a profile, half of a profile. And the nose, the nose, the nose did the best for me in that picture. She's trying to make it fit Mr. Bundy, but she's not sure yet. She doesn't know yet. They haven't made her make it fit Mr. Bundy yet. And they warn her, don't count him out yet. Don't count him out by what you've seen in the paper. And then they tell her to not look at pictures of Mr. Bundy in the paper anymore. And what does she say? Oh, you want me to stop? Is that the statement of someone that's just casually looked at a picture in the paper? <coughs> that's a statement of a person that's been looking at this picture, that's been trying to see if it fits. Next, next reasonable doubt is to move in Mary's testimony. It's Captain Poppy Slime. Waited several months, two months after Mr. Bundy's arrest before he showed that photographic lineup to me here. And how does he show her the lineup? What suggestive things does he say to her? to make sure that she's going to fit it with Mr. Bundy. Twice before he ever shows her the profiles, he says, you know about the prime suspect? He so much as tells her that that prime suspect is in that lineup, and they sure do hope that she can pick it out. She already knows they need her testimony. She's already said to Botiford on the telephone, well, I want to help you if I can. And if you think I can help you, you call me. Not that she has any information that she knows of on her own, but if they come to her and tell her, saw Mr. Bundy's picture on the paper. The first time of seeing the photographic lineup, she wasn't sure. 
She wasn't even sure when she saw Mr. Bundy in the courtroom in October in Tallahassee. That time she still says, well, it looks like the man. She's still not sure. What does she tell Bodiford on the phone? Well, I, going back to this profile stuff, well, she can't identify him unless she sees a profile. She only saw a profile. And that's what she tells Pottinger. But she saw her sit here. She pointed across the room and pointed out Mr. Bundy. Full face. She knows who Mr. Bundy is. She didn't have to see a profile. She identifies the full face. Basically, Nina Neary has been caught up in a terrible situation. And she wants to help if she can. And she can't let herself believe that the man that, the, that committed these crimes is still out on the streets. So she can now let herself be sure, after all the uncertainty, that she can let it fit to make it be Mr. Bunny. I want you to think about Ms. Neary's testimony. Think about the circumstances under which she said she saw this man. Think about if Nita Neary came to you and said, I saw your spouse leaving the motel room. Another person. Objection. Sustain. <clears throat> Ask yourself if that's the kind of testimony that you would base an important decision upon. Next, the state tells you that Mr. Bundy, I want you to believe that Mr. Bundy was in Shiraz because of the testimony of Connie Hastings and Carly Black. Carly Black. And these two young women went to a crowded bar with a group of their girlfriends. And they observed an unusual man who was looking at them. And I think we all have admitted by now that it's, it's not unusual for men to look at women. I'd also like you to consider whether or not it's unusual for someone to be so unnerved or conscious that a man